What's up guys, it's Nick here and today I'm bringing you another Call of Duty Zombies video. I know it's been a while, but I looked at the calendar the other day and I realized, holy crap, it's been 11 years since the map Die Rise came out. That was the second Easter egg that we ever did first in the world. And I figured, you know, I did one for Moon a few years ago. It may be fun to uh, share some of my memories for Die Rise uh, now that we're at 11 years. And so in this video I'm going to talk about some of my memories with the Easter egg steps, uh, solving them, some of the people that I solve them with, uh, streaming, uh, the map itself, and then also I've got a couple things to share that I never talked about before, so I look forward to sharing those, and uh, I find them interesting, maybe you guys will too. To give a bit of context leading up into Die Rise, so Die Rise was the first DLC map for Black Ops 2. The first map for Black Ops 2 Transit had come out back in November, and a couple of me and my friends had actually gotten the game early. So back in the day, you could do that. Uh, you'd just get the disc. It was a disc-based game. So you'd get the disc, unplug your Xbox, you just play the game. Uh, so we got it a few days early. And I remember recording stuff for YouTube before the game was even out. One time, uh, I was using a software. Uh, it was called Wirecast. And this was before OBS or anything that made, you know, it wasn't as easy as it is now. But basically, the software you could record locally or you could stream. And I was trying to record locally, but I accidentally hit the stream button. And a couple days before Black Ops 2 was even out, I was live streaming on Twitch with Black Ops 2 gameplay. And I remember someone hitting me up on Skype and saying, uh, Nick, you're live on Twitch right now. And I looked at my page and was like, oh, crap. I really am. Uh, I ended up getting banned for that. Temporarily, I emailed Twitch. They, they very quickly were like, oh, we got gotcha. you. Totally honest mistake. You're good. I think they they left me banned for like a week, and then I was unbanned. They didn't remove my partnership. It was no big deal. But man, I was really embarrassed when that happened uh, because now everyone knew that I'd kind of gotten a head start. Um, but I wasn't the only one. Uh, we were working with some other friends, and the people who ended up doing the transit Easter egg first, like uh, Champs Bailey's, Javano, uh, Starburst, and MC Sports Hawk, uh, they uh, were also playing it a bit early, and because we were all sharing information. Information, we were kind of like neck and neck so I remember a bit after transit came out I think the game was live at this time but not for long we actually were on the final step and it's a step where with the Avogadro under the radio tower by Notch you're supposed to throw a, a QED or some sort of electrical weapon at him get him under the tower that's the last step and Easter eggs done well I was the person with the electric weapon and I screwed that up I missed him I couldn't hit him at all I screwed it up we find out like 20 minutes later oh the other team just finished the Easter egg so we didn't get that one first because i couldn't figure out how to throw the damn uh electric <laughs> device flashback i'm red i'm red down where is he where is he right someone pick up a turbine he's here yeah he's here i'm down 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 i'm trying i got no uh, Someone pick us up. Help me, help me, help me. Yes, I know, I'm trying. I'm down. Nick, you gotta throw it somewhere. You have to. You can't let it die. Yes, we got it. No, we, we didn't get it. We got rid of it. We didn't do it. Shut up. I out of bullets. Hello, who's responsible? Just threw the EMP grenade away from him. Or I him. So, so we played the game for a while, and Black Ops 2 was fun. I wasn't a huge fan of Transit, to be honest with you. I just didn't like the drastic difference that it was uh, compared to older maps, older zombies maps. So I remember just going back and playing older zombies, honestly. Black Ops 2 had gotten me ready to go for zombies, and I just went back to Black Ops 1 for a bit. By the time Die Rise came around, we were very excited for it. Uh, Treyarch teased it well. It was a very intriguing map and, and very uh, suspenseful to, to figure out what this map is going to actually be like. And I remember playing it for the first time. Uh, it was, you know, just like with Moon. I skipped school. I think I was a senior in high school, so senior year, a few months before graduation. It's not a big deal. But I remember getting up at 5 a.m. Eastern, uh, playing the map the first time alone, I think, just to jump in because, you know, back then Xbox was so slow that 
you know, you'd have to wait for it to appear in the store, the DLC, then you'd have to buy it, wait for it to download. Hey there, it's me, and there's one more card I wanted to pull out of my sleeve. In fact, you didn't even need to buy the map. If you worked for a company like Circuit City or Best Buy, you could get a promotional code, or you could get it through Twitter or other social media. And if you had that promotional code, you could download the map off the Xbox store a good six to eight hours before it released to the general public, giving you a free good head start. I remember some people, it was taking uh, a while for them to download it, just from so much demand. So I remember jumping in and playing it, and immediately being so taken aback by the verticality of the map. They, I knew they had announced that beforehand and talked about it in promotional videos, but I didn't realize just how vertically challenging the map was going to be. So Die Rise was kind of hard at first, getting to learn the map, because you're so used to playing zombies on this two-dimensional plane, and then all of a sudden, you know, this third dimension of verticality is added to the map that can really throw you off. But shortly after downloading the map, I think I was in another game with a couple friends. We're just getting used to things. And actually, a Treyarch developer joined our game. This person worked for Treyarch, was employed by them, uh, and kind of, I think, wanted to show off that they knew a bit more than we did, because obviously they had already been playing the map for a bit. I won't say who this person is, but they since moved on from Treyarch, you know, totally different. They've just moved on, they're out of the game industry entirely. It's been a decade, so it's not, not a huge deal. Uh, but they didn't show us anything about the Easter egg, per se, but if you recall on Transit, there was a nav card, a tiny little chip that could be picked up outside the diner, or sorry, outside the bus depot at the spawn area. Well, the nav card was in a similar area on Die Rise. Uh, our buddy joined the game. On Black Ops 2, you could do that. I kept my lobbies open because I had a pretty well-regulated friends list. And so you could just join mid-game. And he did that. We're like, oh, what's he doing? He's over there spinning around and jumping and shooting. Well, he was showing us where the nav card was. We figured that out. We go and pick the nav card up, and he disconnects. He didn't have a mic in. We're asking him questions. Nothing. Just no response. So he basically joined our game, showed us where it was, and then left. I was kind of uh, a bit baited by that because I was like, oh, if he showed us where that is, he's going to teach us how to do the rest of the Easter egg. That wasn't the case. Getting into the Easter egg, uh, for my information, and I could have sworn it was shorter, but the evidence points to the contrary. Die Rise came out on January 29th, and my Easter egg guide was posted on the 31st. And I remember editing that guide pretty late at night, so it almost took two days to solve the Die Rise Easter egg. And going back and looking at the steps of that Easter egg, there is so much... Uh, that makes it seem simple, but at the same time, it's not because you got to remember it's a lot of trial and error. And while there's all these different ideas getting put in the stream chat and people are sending you things on Skype and, and all of this, you just want to try everything. And so because of that, it can be difficult to get progress. Uh, we were talking with other teams. I know especially MC Sports Hawks groups with like Javano and Bailey, Champs Bailey's on Starburst. You know, we were definitely talking back and forth a lot. And we had people that we were playing with over the few days, like Vosti, um, who, who helped me with Wirecast and, and is the whole reason I could stream in HD, Snorkel, Crazy Guy, Mujibbles, Das Bernie. The final team I ended up finishing it with was Liam for the Winter, Talixian, and Prestigious Key. And I think Prestigious Key is actually still a YouTuber. He's got a full career out of this, which is great. But we spent several days working through these, and some of the steps, they seem so simple looking back, you know. The matching up of the tiles, where you're, you've got two uh, pieces across the map and you have to in in tandem trial and error figure out the order of okay I gotta step on this one then step on this one and, and trial and error that the step of where the zombie symbols appear on the ground and you put a trample steam on them I mean it seems so simple but I can guarantee you we probably tried two dozen things to get there eventually you know as things get figured out there's this really cool feature on the map where there's this big dragon across the side of the map uh, that that has uh, fireworks that come out of its its back and sparklers actually that show you what how how far you are into the easter egg which i thought was so cool there was really nothing like that before that kind of charted your progress the easter egg so it was so cool to see that on this map to know like okay we're getting close to the final step and just the art design on this map as a whole was just beautiful the atmosphere the the overall design of this map was just freaking gorgeous and, and that's one of the things that always stands out to me about this map is how detailed it is you can really tell they put a ton of love it's kind of based on kowloon it's set in a similar city to kowloon the dlc map for black ops 1 but but they reused very little assets from that map. I mean, this map really feels like a 
ground up zombies map, which is something that Black Ops 2 did just so well. Going through the steps and spending the time over the days, it was so much fun just trying to grind and race against other people, trying to think back to who some of the competition was on this map. You know, obviously there were other people racing, but I feel like I was honestly so focused on just trying to get this done first that I didn't really pay attention to what was going on with other teams, uh, even to a lesser extent than I did on previous maps like Shangri-La and, and things of the sort. This was really just focused on trying to to get this done as quick as possible and i remember the final step to talk about the final step you know this is one thing i'm really proud of there's these mahjong tiles around the map and we've been playing with those throughout our easter egg hunt trying to figure out what exactly those do the tiles have these symbols on them and i remember talixian saying you know my girlfriend plays this game it's mahjong so we're like oh instantly oh god okay so we go on the website uh we start looking up mahjong symbols we soon recognize that, you know, the Madrong symbols are directional, north, east, west, and south, or what the symbols correlate to. We realize that one of the tiles is on the corner of the tower, and the tower has now got this blue electricity on each of the posts. Well, I was thinking, okay, we've got numbers, colors, and directions. I realized, oh, wait, it was like a light bulb went off in my head. I explained it to the team. It's easy. It's you take the directions, you match that to the color of the number tiles. There were eight tiles. Four of them had numbers of dots, and four of them had directions. You match those to the number of dots, the colors, and that'll tell you what order the directions of the tower need to be hit in order to to do whatever's next so then it becomes okay what do we need to do in that order so we had those tiles and, and order and we had to figure out okay what do we have to do next well it's pretty simple uh you know there's there's always want to focus on new things in these easter eggs that's one thing i always remembered you want to always focus on whatever is new whatever is new is probably related to the easter egg and needs to be utilized in some way for example the slick slickwifier on this map you have to use it to uh lubricate the balls in the spawn area that are under the dragon to get those balls spinning so so being able to take that and and re recognize oh it's probably the galva knuckles and I remember just, it seemed so easy. You take the Galva Knuckles, you do it in the order that the colored tiles tell you to directionally. You figure out the directions by the north is marched, marked by the north one right there on the tower. You look at the sun, figure out which way the sun is rising. Boom, you're good to go. Uh, and, and we did it, and that was it. The Easter egg was solved. I remember being so excited by that final step because it just felt so right to figure it out within our team, within our group, and just put it all together. It's so simple in retrospect, but that was really empowering at the time. And one of the first moments in Zombies where it just felt great to, to be able to take full ownership and say, wow, we as a group solved this. This is incredible. We're the first. And so we solved it first. I remember that night staying up very late, maybe 10, 11 o'clock, which at the time was pretty late. I used to wake up to go to school at 4.45 in the morning and staying up that late to, to put the Easter egg guide together. This Easter egg guide was different because I didn't record the actions as we did them from the live stream like I'd done previously what I actually did was just live streamed and wrote the steps down and tracked everything and then I, I went back into theater which was present in Black Ops 1 but was greatly enhanced in Black Ops 2 so I went back into theater and took theater clips from our playthrough and used those to build a more professional looking easter egg guide and I think it comes across really well in that video and so I'm happy with that but it was just a different way of making that guide and it took more time to have to overlay the steps in the video and 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 edit all these little clips together that I had taken to, to overall put it all together. I remember going to bed that night just exhausted because all I'd been doing over those few days was just playing zombies. I, I want to say that I had skipped uh, one day of school and then gone to school the next two. And just as soon as I got off school the next two days, just going right back to Easter egg hunting and just hoping and praying that the Easter egg wouldn't get solved while I wasn't there. And posting the video up and just sharing it online and like 
okay, it's done. I can go to sleep. And I remember waking up the next morning, had like 50,000 views. And I was like, wow. Uh, it was a hugely successful Easter egg video. I was really happy with how it worked out. And I think we as a team were really happy with just getting it done first. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, the, the second Easter egg that we ever did first in the world. Uh, and that just kept our momentum rolling, you know. Once that happened, I was really hooked through the rest of Black Ops 2. There was no looking back. Come hell or high water, I was going to try and be first in the world on every single Black Ops 2 map. But Die Rise is, is very fondly remembered by me. Uh, I don't think the map has great replayability because of the verticality challenges and it requires such a unique approach to play it. But the map itself is beautiful and sets up a, a beautiful atmosphere. And I still go back and play it every once in a while. I do that with most of the Zombies maps, uh, except for 5. I go back and play most of those every once in a while just because I still love them so much. One other thing to throw on, uh, in my Easter egg guide, I had put a directional guide that basically only had, you know, directional letters N-E-S-W over the tower, meant to help people see on the tower which direction is which. Well, a few days after my Easter egg guide came out, Rooster Teeth made their own Easter egg guide, but they used my directional guide, my image that I had made to show the directions of the tower on, on my guide. And I remember thinking, well, they used my image, what the hell, let's see what fought, what happens. And I submitted a copyright claim on Rooster Teeth, claiming that they had used my assets without permission. Which is true, they did. They never asked me, never reached out, nothing like that. But yeah, they, Rooster Teeth had a copyright claim from Nick That Gaming Show for several days. Their video was down, uh, per my claim. I think it was just a bit of uh, brash arrogance at the time, just to see what I could get away with. Uh, a few days later, their lawyer emailed me and said, we're submitting a counterclaim. This is not, you know, this is fair use. This is not us using your copyright. It's a picture. And so they, they got their video reinstated by by will of, yeah, I can't dispute it. I had no legitimate dispute nor assets or resources to dispute it. But that was funny to, to think back then and after Die Rise and think, yeah, there was a few days that Rooster Teeth's Easter egg guide wasn't available because I decided I wanted to see what I could get away with in terms of striking down <laughs> YouTube content. Uh, but yeah, just just wanted to share some information and memories about Die Rise. You know, it's been 11 years, and I love looking back on this. It's such a fun time, uh, and and just sharing my you know firsthand uh, memories and knowledge. I'd love to hear some of your guys' memories of Die Rise down below in the comments. Uh, you know, were you Easter egg hunting Die Rise back then? Were you playing it on launch day? Were you watching someone else stream it? Were were you following along? Love to hear your overall memories and thoughts of Die Rise. Uh, and if if you've watched this video I, I hope you enjoyed it maybe uh found some insight found my musings mildly entertaining but thanks for tuning in and uh maybe i'll be around soon doing another retrospective uh i love thinking back and, and keeping my memory greasy when it comes to these things uh so thank you very much and i'll see you in another video He retired and everything just went to shit. Like now they just, they won't let you get drunk. Like you gotta get up at 6 a.m. instead of sleeping until 10 or 11.